trust him at all times. He has delivered me from all fear, and he. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks very much. You may be seated for a while. Let me thank all of you for coming out tonight. How are you, do how are you all doing? Doing just fine? Excellent. All right. All right. All right. So here's what's happening. There are a few things that we need to keep in mind. Number one is that I have discovered any time I'm doing a program like this, rain falls in the day. I, I assure you. But what I've discovered about God is it's really strange, but God knows what he's doing. So I have learned not to worry about the rain. Apparently, some of us, have, some of us still have to learn on that. You know, don't worry about the rain. What I have discovered throughout my ministry is that when rain falls in the day, God actually, it seems as though God is aware that if he doesn't allow it to fall in the day, it will fall in the night when the service is going on. So he lets it rain in the day so that you can come in the night. Didn't you realize that yesterday it rained a whole lot and then in the evening for service it wasn't raining? Forget that rain thing. Don't get tired. 
Don't get tied up at all. Today the same thing happened. Check what might happen on Wednesday. <laughs> Don't get tied up, you know. <laughs> Don't get tied up. The real thing is not an excuse. God is doing his own thing. All right? So you got to bear that in mind. The next thing that you need to keep in mind is that um, uh, I promised, I promised you last night. Anybody remembers any of the promises that I made last night? One of the, any, any promise I made, I made last night in terms of gifts. Oh, uh -huh. right. No gifts, right? I shouldn't give any gifts, right? All right. So I, I indicated that if persons are here consistently and don't, don't work shift, you will get a gift tonight right so so i was looking where's cyrilla cyrilla not here cyrilla cyrilla's guest i have a gift for that for for for, for my little partner but he set me up that is that little boy is possibly out i think about how old is he wait they, they reach they reach? They have to go down to their mother's home. Okay. They would be here on Wednesday. All right. Because, because I have something for... How old is Levi? Le well, Levi looking like two to me. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, I'm telling you, Levi, I have a gift for Levi, right? I have a nice gift for Levi right here. And um, I, want, I want to give him, I, I was about to say that um, since I indicated that there shouldn't be any, um, you shouldn't be working shift. And I'm not seeing Levi. Levi is two years old. That is against the law. That is child labor, you know? So I was a, I was concerned about that, but but I got you. Yes, please. Okay. What? Okay. Well, maybe I need to upgrade the book. <laughs> I know thinking about it. I need to upgrade the book. So 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 to to those persons who are concerned, um please um we have some gifts to you. Now, there is somebody who somebody and and, and one of my friends sold out this person because I, I called out for the person. The person, the guest that has been here most regularly. That would mean you were here, if you were here on Friday night, you're, you were here on Sunday night, you're here tonight. Stand, please. Right, right. So, so, since, so since the person not standing, and I know the person is, I feel that my friend gave me the wrong information. So let me ask my friend, Cohen, Cohen, the person you talked to me about last night was here Friday, Sunday, and Monday, right? Okay, just now, just now, just now, I know you're standing up strategically. The person's feet are all right? It, right. Help the person stand up, please. <laughs> Oh, oh, you're playing thing. That's right. Put your, no, no, no. Stay standing. Remain standing. Remain standing. You're playing shy with me. I, I, I make you out already. I make you out. <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a gift for this young lady um, for coming consistently so far. And by the way, by the way, as you continue coming, remember the most consistent person the most, yes, an usher can start coming. The, the person, the guest who is most consistent, right, will get another gift. You'll get a, 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 a big gift, right? A big gift. So you have to keep coming, right? So here's what I want to do. I want to give you, I want to give you a book. And I want to give you the, 
I want to give you a choice, right? A choice. So I'm going to show you these books here. Finding Calm in the Chaos of Life. And there's the other one, The Power of Hope, Overcoming Depression, Anxiety, Guilt, and Stress. Which one you want? You want both of them now? That is why you tell me that. All right, no problem. <laughs> she, she doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right, so choose one for her. Maybe carry it close to her. Let her see it nicely. And let her, she could even close her eyes and just say this one. All right, very, very well. All right, so, so is there somebody, uh, let's say uh, a young person, a young person who is here for the first time? Any young person here for the first time? Yes, yeah, stand up, stand up, stand up. Thanks very much, my dear. Aha, uh -huh. one. Beautiful, beautiful. Listen, what? Did just stay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold, hold, hold on right there, hold on right there. I just want to know who brought you? Which one? Okay, you brought her? Uh huh. You registered her outside? You don't want any points? Yeah, well, you have to make sure and register her uh, outside. Okay? So, so right after. Right after she gets this gift. In fact, Usher, take, take both of them outside one time. Let her go out with her gift and register her one time. All right? So, 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 so this one is for you. Oh, okay. Somebody, somebody said, uh, somebody said he'll give you a better one. This one. This one for you, right? Cool? Nice. And I want to meet you afterwards. I want to hear your name. Okay, afterwards. And a big smile, right? Very well. Thank you so much. That's just for her. All right. Put your hands together for her, please. Beautiful. So we have... All right. So we'll, we'll, give, we'll give other gifts uh, on, on, on Wednesday. We have plenty gifts to give away. Right? But just a minute. No, just... I, I know I've given mixed signals. Um, Usher, Sister Pam... Just let them look inside for a little while. Just let them look inside. Just let them look inside. Just let them look inside. Here's what. Here's what. Folk, just let them look inside for a little while. Just look. Here's what. A little excited now. A little excited now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just, I just a little excited. I thought. Tonight, I was anticipating lover's night, and you're coming red. You understand what I'm saying? So, so I'm a little excited. So, it was a, so I decided to show off a little bit. Sherry, Sherry, Sherry doesn't have to come in red. The hair ready. So, she, she, could, she, she could come just so, you know? So, so just come, right? If you, if you plan to come sort of, sort of like this. Right, 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 right. So, you wanted that one, Elsia? Yeah. You wanted that one? All right, next time. Next time, on, 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 on Wednesday. On Wednesday, go back and out. All right, so, so that's enough. Yeah, you can, you can go and sign up there quickly, and we're going to pray, and we're going to get into the Word of God. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you so much for being an awesome God to us. Thank you for your leading. Thanks for the message that is going to be shared tonight. Let your will be done in this place even now. May this message be impactful in Jesus' name. Amen. By the way, Sister Janet, one of your one of your people missing. She had some challenges today. Yeah, tell her don't let the rain hold her back. <laughs> right. So 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 I see my other friend here. Right? I see my other friend here. So here we're going on now. Here we're going on. On Wednesday. On Wednesday. I want to see somebody else with you. So here's what. 
are giving out gifts like that on Wednesday. You bring your husband, your spouse, your lover, your friend, bring, bring. And we're going to have something nice for you because we want to, want to treat you nice. God bless you. Right, so here goes, here goes. We, tonight, tonight's presentation is but God. May I start out with just telling you that names in biblical times were extremely important. Names in the Bible are considered extremely important. In fact, if you read biblical books and biblical backgrounds, you will actually see something like this said. Before a baby was born, people wanted to know the name. Or before the baby was introduced to them, they wanted to know the name. Because the name said something about that child. The name said something about the scenario in which this child was born. The name says something about the, 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 the name says something about maybe the, the aspirations of the parents. So in the Bible we find a name, someone, a child called Ichabod. Anybody remembers that name? Ichabod. Ichabod was born around the time when the ark was taken from Israel by the Philistines. And when one checks the meaning of Ichabod, it simply is the glory has departed. So you just need to know the name and you will be able to identify with the, a scenario or some aspiration of parents and maybe society. Names were extremely important in biblical times. So tonight, it is my intention to share with us something about some names some names in the Bible. And tonight I plan to start off with the son of Ahaz. Ahaz was not a good king. He was not a good king. And he gave birth, or his wife gave birth to this child called, which, who they called Hezekiah. Hezekiah, Hezekiah, if you want to find out about Hezekiah, you would read 2 Chronicles 29 and 30. Those two chapters, you'll find out a lot about Hezekiah. Hezekiah means, the name Hezekiah means Yahweh heals. Yahweh heals. Hezekiah came on the throne and decided to set the house of God in order. You see, things were not going all that well in society. He considered that if the house was in order, listen to me, if the house of God is in order, the homes would be in order. In other words, the families would be in order. If God's house, if God's temple, if the church, if the preachers are preaching the right things, if the teachers are teaching the right things at church, if the church is set in order, Hezekiah reasoned that the homes would be set in order. Uh -huh. I want you to follow this closely. And then if the if the house is the house of God is set in order, the schools would be in order. Mm -hmm. The schools would be in order. And if the house of the Lord was in order, here's what will happen. The communities will be in order. And the nation will be in order. It seems to me when one considers the situation in our, in our society today in Trinidad, it seems to me that one will understand that it appears that the house of God needs to be put in order. Because we have crises coming left, right, and center in our nation. Real stress. So the house of God needs to be set in order. So Nehemiah, so, sorry, not Nehemiah, so, so Hezekiah, Yahweh heals. 
decided that restoration of the long neglected religious services was a primary was supposed to be a primary ambition of his he needed to set the house of the lord in order so we find in second chronicles chapter 29 and by the way i'm going to give you some work in your bibles tonight or some of you have your gadgets so you'll easily be able to find those texts so i'm not putting up all the texts on the screen tonight but some of them will be there here's what second chronicles 29 6 and 10 6 and 10 these verses say what you can help me read it for our fathers have okay so let's go again for our fathers have what trespassed and done that which was evil in the eyes of the lord our god so hezekiah is saying that and have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the lord and turned their backs no Nehem no no i'm going back to nehemiah no hezekiah says no it is in what in what mine heart to make a covenant with the lord god of israel that his fierce wrath may turn away from us so he was all about setting the house of the lord in order i suspect that there was some good counsel found in deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 30 and 31 we'll read those read these verses with me when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee even in the latter days if thou come on if thou turn to whom the lord thy god and shall be what shall be come shout that out and shall be obedient unto his voice here's what happens for the in verse 31 for the lord thy god is a merciful god so he's calling upon us to be obedient recognizing that our god is a merciful god he will not forsake thee neither destroy thee nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear to them i'm saying today that this is good admonition to those who had forgotten or rejected jesus christ when you reject jesus christ jesus calls you he still calls you and says listen if you will just remember me if you would just remember me and if you will just turn or you will put in your heart in your mind you will determine i am going to obey all that the lord has said god promises to be merciful mm -hmm. somebody should be getting hope tonight because all of us have sinned and come short of god's glory not so but when you make up your mind to be on the lord's side i'm saying to us right now tonight that god stretches out his hand in mercy for he's a merciful god now there's another text which is second kings second kings 18 5 to 7 let's read please let's go he trusted in the lord god of israel this is talking about king hezekiah he trusted in the lord god of israel so that after him was what none like him among all the kings of judah nor any that were before him for he clave that is he held on he hugged up he embraced he decided that he would not let he would not let god go at all he was desperate to hold on to god for he clave to the lord and departed not from following him but what but what come shout that out but what kept his commandments this is talking about obedience kept his commandments which the lord commanded moses wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute what so so this is not any wishy-washy commandment you're talking about you have to go back to moses to check out what he's talking about which the lord commanded moses and it's interesting to note that it is the lord that commanded moses mm -hmm. but let's not dwell on that and the lord come on let's verse seven and the lord was 
with him, and he what? Prospered whithersoever he went forth, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not, because the Assyrians had, 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 had Judah under, uh, under wraps, had Judah under pressure. And, and it's under Hezekiah, they decided, hear what? God is with us, and we are now going to stand up against that oppressor. Uh-huh. Now, Second Chronicles 31, 20, and 21 would tell us some things interesting. And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah, come on, and wrote that which was, which was, come on, which was? good and right and truth before the Lord his God and in every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the commandments to seek his God he did it with all his heart and prospered let me tell you something let me tell you something it is time that we understand that when, when we decide to be faithful and loyal to God, he prospers us. There are blessings in store for us when we decide to be loyal, faithful to God. Mm -hmm. So Hezekiah, Yahweh heals. Jehovah heals. God heals, called for the priests and Levites to dedicate themselves because they weren't right up to scratch. Huh. He called for the church to be approachable and accessible to all people. He called the community. In fact, the community needed a voice of advocacy. And as a result, the church needed to stand up and speak against certain things that were happening in society. The church must not be silent. Church must know when to speak out. For someone, my friend Gideon St. Bryce, didn't have this in the script, but I need to tell you this. Gideon St. Bryce said some time ago, some years ago to me, that... Some of our youth leaders were called to a certain meeting with government officials. Um, youth leaders from different denominations. And the, pre, the, 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 the little game, the, the little teaser that they had up front was to, to, to name an animal that is most similar to your organization. People call different names. And then when, when they got to our folk and they identified that they were Seventh-day Adventists, the government official said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't tell me nothing. Don't tell me anything right now. You'll talk after this. When I think of Seventh-day Adventists, I think of a bat. I think of a bat. And they ask why? Because they have plenty of activity. But it's happening in the night, nobody knows. Plenty of things happening. Seven Advent is doing a whole lot of things, but the nation don't know. Look, Cleon, Cleon struggling with this. Cleon doing some introspection right now. <laughs> So the people must know, the people must know that we need to be advocates. He called, Hezekiah called for the music band. Aha, uh -huh, we were having some good music there. He called for the music band. He wanted worship. Mm -hmm. But there's something else that you need to keep in mind. And it's found actually, if you look in the book of Isaiah... So this is where we move away from looking on the screen. <laughs> because you're going to do some work and persons who are more familiar with the Bible, you can help out others. But we're going to do some work tonight in the Bible. Or you can look on your phones and pull, out, pull up the text. So Isaiah 31 
verse 8. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Follow me closely here. Follow me closely. So we find Isaiah coming in and saying, hey, Hezekiah, you are, you are on the brink of death. You, you are terminally ill. You will die. There is, there is not a chance that you will live. And, and, and follow me. Follow me here. And Hezekiah was concerned about that. So he decided to pray. Said, Lord, Lord, I want to live. Okay, so this is not the text that I just read. Eh? That's not the text that I just read. I told you it's Isaiah 38. So let me just... Uh, sorry, that's what I said? Sorry. So it's Isaiah 38, 1. Right? So I need to put on the other glasses now. Right. Thanks very much. So, so let me, right, right. So, so Isaiah 38, 1. So he was, so he was on the brink of death and I, and he started to pray. Hey, listen. And God granted him his request to live longer. He extended his life by how many years? Anybody remembers? 15 years he extended his life. So Isaiah had to go back. And tell, tell Hezekiah here what, boy, God has, God has granted, God has heard your prayer and has granted you your request. But I'm saying tonight that not every prayer, hmm, let, let's put it this way. You need to be careful what prayer you pray. Be very careful because sometimes it might be better to go without certain things. Ah, no, no, don't, don't, don't put that on. Don't, don't put that on right now. Leave, leave, leave it off. You, you, you see, you see, what you need to understand is that Nehemiah, saying that over and over, Hezekiah was, was at the pinnacle of his reign. Uh, and he wanted to continue doing his thing. Uh-huh. So he didn't want to die. He wanted to continue. He, he was at the height of the demonstration of his skills. And he was about to be struck down. So he said, Lord, I want to continue. Be careful. Sometimes what you desire may have far-reaching negative consequences. If you aren't careful with God's blessings, if you're not careful with your looks or, your, or the money or whatever, it can actually turn against you. Uh -huh. you, you, see, you see, some, some things may not be for you. God said to me, Hezekiah, next time, anytime, I, anytime I'm, about, I'm about to say that word, you say Hezekiah, right? God, God knew that, that's right, Hezekiah, Hezekiah's death that, at that time may have been a blessing. Oh, his death at that time may have been a blessing. Hmm. You see, God granted him 15 more years, but, but you need to understand, and we go to 2 Chronicles 33 verse 9. Let me make sure is that I see in there. 2 Chronicles 33 verse 9, and this is where we start to move very quickly in our presentation for tonight. We're dealing with but God. 2 Chronicles. What is it? What is it? 33, uh-huh, verse 9, it says, so what? So Manasseh seduced Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. Wait, 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 wait. So this is a man, we have another man introduced. 
And the Bible says of this guy that he was, he was bad. He was an evil king, very evil king. He was not just considered evil among God's people. You see, the gang members, the murderers, the drug lords, and all of the, the, the people who we may consider to be bad people. This king, who grew up among people who lived for God, this king was worse than them. This king was real bad. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Manasseh. Manasseh was Hezekiah's son. Hezekiah means Yahweh heals. Manasseh means I forgot. Oh my goodness. Woo! I forgot that God heals. <laughs> I forgot that God heals. Manasseh. Manasseh started, started reigning at the age of 12. Remember, remember, God gave Hezekiah 15 more years. If God did not give Hezekiah those 15 years, Manasseh would never have been born. Be careful what you pray for. So, God heals, gave birth to I forgot. How dare you forget when your father has a testimony of God's healing? How dare you forget? Let me tell you a little bit about, about, about I forgot. <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit about I forgot. Second Kings 21, 2 Kings 21, verse 16. See, watching the time there. 2 Kings 21, verse 16. Let me just get that quickly. It says what? Moreover, Manasseh shed very much innocent blood till he, was, he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. This man was a killer. This man was no good. This man was a wretch. <laughs> besides his sin, sorry, it's, it's, it was 16 years. Beside, besides his sin by which he made Judah sin in doing evil in the sight of the Lord. So, 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 so this guy was not only sinning by himself. This man was causing the nation to sin. His influence was so Rampant, widespread, and ridiculous. So I said that he began, I forgot, began to reign as he ascended the throne at the age of 12. He killed innocent people, as the Bible says, including Isaiah, the prophet. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> the same guy who came back and told his father, God has granted you extra time. He licked him up. Mm -hmm. He did not want any rebukes. Nobody could criticize him. Nobody could criticize this guy. And this guy was unleashed on the nation for 55 years. In other words, 55 years he was king. Forgive me. I think I have been living a long time. I ain't even reached that yet. Coming to come. <laughs> but I ain't reached that yet. And those who have passed 55, you know that it is a long time. Because you have not made another 55 yet. So it's a long time. And God, I, 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 and, and I want you to note that it is because of Hezekiah's 
I would say error or misjudgment in that, pray, in that prayer. And what he did with those 15 extra years, because he did nonsense. If he had, if he had only lifted up Jesus in a big way, it may have been different. Mm -hmm. May I ask tonight, is there anybody here who can identify with I forgot? Parents who are consistently in church, but their children forgot? Mm -hmm. Could I identify with that? Anybody here who can identify with I forgot? Children coming to church or being sent to church, but the parents forgot? You grew up knowing the way of God, but you forgot. I can see Hezekiah talking and telling his, his, his son about God and godly, the godly path. But this guy forgot. Is there any nation, maybe even Trinidad, any community that was once very God-fearing and all of a sudden you realize that it has forgotten? Any home in one of the buildings, any home in one of the buildings, you used to hear worship morning and evening, you used to hear the singing, you used to hear the welcoming of the Sabbath, you used to hear all of these things, but now you no longer hear it. Why? Because somebody forgot. Is that somebody I'm talking to now? Somebody I'm talking to now who used to come to church, used to go to church so often, but... Bible says in Deuteronomy, remember, when God has given you, God has allowed your, your, your property, your, your land, your vineyards to bear fruit, and, 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 and you have gotten houses and land and all these other things. The Bible says, remember, and don't forget that it is God who has given you these blessings. So we have to be very mindful. Don't ever forget. But I want you to observe because this message is but God. So God sees this guy. I forgot. This ridiculous king. I forgot. <laughs> he sees him. But thank God, God did not forget him. Ay, ay, ay. God did not forget him. That is critical. So while we may forget God, God does not forget us. But God, God looks down and sees Manasseh doing his nonsense. And God said, I will remember this guy. And God desired that I, I forgot. God desired I forgot to remember that Yahweh healed his father. You hearing what I'm saying? God desired that I forgot, would remember, would come to the point where he remembered that Yahweh healed his father, Hezekiah. You ever heard the statement, if you don't hear, you'll feel? So God went running down Manasseh. Tell a child, child, you see the child going to touch the stove, not so? Uh-huh. Tell the child, don't do that. You'll get burnt. Child tries again. You see the child. You repeat the instruction, don't touch. You'll get burnt. It's going to hurt you. Uh-huh. The child goes again. Well, my view is, at that point, let the child go ahead. Let the child go ahead. But make sure and be present and close by to ensure that when the child gets burnt, he is not destroyed. Uh -huh. So I want, you to, I want you to learn. I don't want you to be destroyed. Did you hear what I said? And that's oftentimes what God has to do with stubborn people. Are there any stubborn persons, a stubborn young person here, a stubborn older one? Thank you very much, a stubborn older one. Is, are you here tonight and is God trying to get your attention? Do you want him to tell you if you don't hear, you will feel? I'm saying tonight, 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 you're better here or else you may have to feel.
So, in 2 Chronicles 33, 2 Chronicles 33, verses 11 to 13, here's what the Bible says. Therefore, the Lord brought upon them the captains of the army of the king of Assyria, who took I forgot, <laughs> who took I forgot with hooks. Mm -hmm. There are pictures on the internet with them with, 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 with hooks through, them, through, through his nose. Hmm? With hooks, bound him with bronze fetters and carried him off to Babylon. Now, when he was in affliction, he Im just now, man. He implored, the Bible says, the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. All of a sudden, I forgot, remembers. Ay, ay, ay. God was interested in getting his attention. And I'm telling you tonight, if you forget, God is interested in getting you to remember. And if you play stubborn, it will get difficult. But it is all about God trying to win you to himself so that you may be saved. God is desperately hounding you down. So he goes into captivity and begins to remember the old parts. Anyone here can testify of being defiant and getting thrown into the hospital. And there on your hospital bed, on your sick bed, you remembered. You forgot. But now you remember anyone was slighting God and got into an accident and then remembered him. Anyone occasionally slips and then hears gunshots in the buildings. Someone knows, someone you know dies and, and, and you realize it is time to straighten up and fly right. Hmm? Anybody? Anybody? Gunshots fired after you and you escaped. Is it luck? No, it is God intervened, <laughs> but God, he would have licked you up, but God would have licked you up. The Holy Spirit was, taking, was talking to Manasseh while he was in prison in a foreign land. So Manasseh re returns to God with a newfound zeal and vigor. Do you see him getting excited about God? Hmm? You see him there, he is singing loudly in church, he is witnessing, he's telling people about Jesus. If you see, if you see him enthusiastic, he is telling everyone of where God brought him. This is a story of grace. Oh, the heights and depth of mercy. Mm. That's God. But the problem is, and you're just taking note of these texts, I wouldn't have time to read them. 2 Kings 21, 21, and 22. The problem is that while he was doing, this is Manasseh, while I forgot who remembered, was doing nonsense, he had a child whom he named Ammon. Mm. Now this child likely did not hear of the goodness of God. This child did not know the hymns or godly music. This child was allowed to do just simply as he pleased and just evolve because daddy was a no good father, at least at that time. And then daddy was taken into captivity, now had a fatherless, fatherless home. He believed God did not care for his dad was gone. Someone once called this guy a real muck. This guy, the son of I forgot who eventually remembered, was a real muck. God always was seeking to save him. Remember, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Even mucks deserve a, a God like that. Even these individuals God desires. The meaning of Ammon is trustworthy. Maybe Manasseh had high hopes. High hopes, but it didn't work out. This guy was supposed to be trustworthy, hmm? but it didn't turn out that nice. The Bible says that Ammon only served 
as king for two years. He was assassinated. He was judged, that means, and his cup was full, was full to overflowing. You have to be careful what you're doing as far as God is concerned. God is looking, each one of us has a cup. And if you look in Revelation, you talk, it talks about the cup of his indignation. It's going up, it's filling, it's filling, it's filling. You have to be mindful of that. And if it is full, when it is full, that's the time God acts decisively. It only took two years for Ammon to reign. And that was it. That was it. That was it. God said, I can't deal with this man anymore. This guy wouldn't listen. So some of you came here tonight. Huh? You're hearing the word of God. And, you, and, and, and when I make the call tonight, you will sit down there. Let me tell you something. You sit down there. <laughs> you sit down there. The cup filling up. <laughs> the cup filling up. And God is saying to you, when by the way, you don't know when it's absolutely filled. God does know. And when God sees that it's filled, he will act decisively. I'm saying you don't have to fill up that cup. You just have to respond to God tonight. So the last part of this message as I close. Ammon, <laughs> Ammon uh, gave birth to a guy called Josiah, King Josiah. I want you to check, I want you to, I want you to track this thing. Hezekiah, God heals. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. But thank God I remembered, eh? I remembered. But I didn't have the time to really work with that, with that guy who I had some hope in. This guy whose name should have, was meant trustworthy, but, but really didn't meet the, the, the standard, the expected standard. And God wiped him out. Mm -hmm. but Josiah came. Josiah means Yahweh has strengthened, ah, but God. But God, see this family go from way up here. Huh? Yahweh has healed, forgets, remembers, and then we find a muck. And then, aha, uh -huh, we find Yahweh has strengthened. But God, but God, Josiah comes to the throne after his dad was assassinated after two years on the throne. He took over. At the age of eight years of age, his reign lasted for 31 years. He was born to a wicked father, troubled by temptations and negative her her hereditary tendencies, with few positive role models and counselors. Yet he stands for the right. Some of us are making excuses because of the environment in which we live. I'm saying that Josiah is an example here. You don't have to. Well, it would be good if you have good role models, but you don't have to have good role models. You've got to have God leading you because God is hounding you down. God is hounding you down. Even as he led the nation was cascading, cascading, tittering on the brink of moral and national ruin. Yet we find him praying and begging God, Lord, 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 have mercy. Lamentations 3 verse 22 tells us that God's compassions fail not. Tonight, tonight you heard of a family, a family that went from way up to weigh down and up again because of God. Maybe that even reflects your life. A time when you remembered God, God strengthened you and you thanked him and then you started taking him for granted and you forgot him. <laughs> and then he did all that he could to get you back. He strengthened you. Today, this evening, 
I'm going to ask you to do something that is maybe the most difficult thing you have done over this festival of word and worship. And even if this is the first time that you came, you can still take a stand for Jesus. God is counting on you. God is counting on you. Tonight, you heard. Don't tell me you didn't hear God speaking to you tonight. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me you'd shy. God is counting on you. So tonight, we're going to have a brief prayer. And then I am going to ask you. I'm going to ask anybody here. Anybody here who has forgotten Jesus in the past. You recognize the fact that God really healed you in times past. And you know what? Tonight he's strengthening you. He has put a word in your heart. He's strengthening you. If you ever went through that, you ever experienced that, I'm going to ask you in a little while to raise your hand and put it back down. And then I'm going to ask those persons, our guests, I'm going to have a specific call for you. Our guests, I'm, I have a specific call for you. And that will be to respond to God's call tonight. You're not going to get away. God is counting on you. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. We're wrapping up here. Father God, these musicians are doing a fantastic job just setting the tone for what is taking place here tonight. Tonight, Father, we heard your word. We heard how you led and you blessed Hezekiah, but he didn't utilize that blessing wisely. And as a result, we found out that I forgot was born. But thank God, Jesus, you hounded him down through the Holy Spirit. And you allowed him to go through hard times so that he would remember. Unfortunately, he had forgotten you for so long that his child, his son, never apparently had that opportunity or desired to line up with you and you had to cut him down cut him down to size but thank God in the midst of corruption we found Josiah coming up Yahweh has strengthened we are thankful that you did that and tonight as an, as an example or as a demonstration of our thankfulness that you have led us through those meanderings of life. And right now, tonight, we consider ourselves strengthened. Anybody here tonight is thankful that God has strengthened you tonight? Would you just raise your hand, beautiful, and put it down? Praise God, praise God, but God. Right now, I'm talking to those guests among us. I said I'm going to ask you to do one of the most difficult things. But I'm telling you, when you do it, you will feel relieved. If you don't do it, you will be going home wondering, what if I, I, I heard God's call, but I, I didn't respond. I didn't respond. I did not respond. Tonight, I'm asking... Our guests, you may have drifted away. You may have gone through these same meanderings. And tonight, God has strengthened you and you love Jesus with, an, with a passion for hounding you down and strengthening you tonight. 
I want to pray a special prayer for you. And I want you to stand, our guests. You saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't worry about what other people are doing. This is you and God. I want you to stand. I'm seeing the guests standing. Praise God for you. Don't. Other guests want to stand. This is your chance. Stand for Jesus. Stand for Jesus. Anybody? Yes, I see another guest. I see another guest. Guests are standing. Don't be left out. There are other guests here who should be standing. And you know that the Holy Spirit is talking to you. I'm telling you, stand. Stand right now. Stand. 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 Another guest just stood. Another guest just stood. Somebody else, a young person, you want to stand. You're hearing the Holy Spirit talking to you. Stand. An older one, stand. Stand right now. Stand. Stand. Is there another one that wants to stand? God is talking to you. You want to stand? You're impressed. Stand. Stand for Jesus. Jesus. Anybody else standing for Jesus tonight? I'm saying that prayer for you now. Father God, thank you for these who have stood, demonstrating commitment and strength and fortitude. Things may not get better immediately, but give them the courage to hold on tenaciously to you from here on forgive them for all that they would have done the wrong things and give them strength may they go forth knowing that you have forgiven them they have a clean slate and those guests who have struggled to stand tonight give them give them strength the next time to stand for you stand for you thank you so much for this in jesus name Amen. May God bless you folk. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. I'm looking forward to meeting you out there. And do remember, we have another thing happening tonight right here. Remember, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward. Wednesday, bring out everybody. Let's have a good time. God's blessings, everybody. God's blessings. I'm meeting you outside.